Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, we'll call the meeting of the April 19th Development Committee to order. And I see we have a forum. Uh, we're going to request to allow remote participation from Member Garcia under Section 7A of the Open Meetings Act, pursuant to Section A of the Open Meetings Act, if a forum of the members of the public body is physically present as required by Section 2.01. Majority of the public body may allow a member of that body to attend the meeting by other means if the member is prevented from physically attended because of personal illness or disability, employment purposes, family or other emergency. Um, member Garcia contacted me. She has a illness in her family. Is there a motion to allow member Garcia to participate pursuant to section 7A so of the open meeting? Second. The motion is second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Welcome member Garcia. Thank you. Chairman's remarks. I have nothing under Chairman's remarks. Public comment. Um, public comments limited to three minutes per person at the beginning of the meeting. Any comment on zoning items are limited to discussion of testimony or evidence presented at the Zoning Board of Appeals. No new testimony or evidence can be presented. I know we have most, if not all, of the people here commenting this morning on the soccer complex. All I would ask of you is if you have uh, basically the same thing, thing to say as the person who uh, talk before you and you agree with them, just say, I agree with you. You don't necessarily have to go through the whole thing all over again. So we will begin with um, Linda Painter, a member of the Forest Preserve District of DuPage County. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Linda Painter. I'm president of Timberlake Civic Association, and I'm also the um, Forest Preserve Commissioner for District 3 in which this property resides. Um, Timberlake has 780 single family homes in unincorporated Southeast DuPage County. We've had a number of uh, meetings uh, about this in person and on Zoom. Last year, we were extremely opposed to this development and had over 75 people in this cafeteria during COVID and many, many emails were written. The county board ultimately denied this entire project 16 to zero and we all thank you and the rest of the board very much. Uh, things have changed in a year. The conditions uh, reflect pretty much all of our many, many concerns and requests. The variance of changing uh, 300 parking spots to 251 spots was never a concern of anyone, any of ours in our meetings. So I provided two Zoom meetings this past weekend regarding the variance. All the residents that signed into that meeting agreed that we should support the variance of uh, decreased parking spots from 300 to 251. The reasons that were brought up at those meetings were fewer spots in the, are in the best interest of our neighborhood. Uh, the de developer provided staggering times to accommodate uh, the 251 spots. Uh, less lighting in the parking lot, if there are fewer spots, there's less lighting in the parking lot, less car headlights, less noise, less asphalt, less stormwater runoff, and less wear and tear on South Greenwich Road. Therefore, we do support the variance to reduce the parking. That's where I was going to stop until I got a notice from the Forest Preserve yesterday, and I talked to them today, and they would like me to read this one little paragraph. You know what, Linda, I'm going to read that in. If, if this is the same letter you got, I'm going to read it at the end of public comment. Okay, fine. Thank then you. I won't read that. Let me see. Um, okay. Hope I'm just saying that hopefully um, it will be resolved that for the Forest Preserve and for Timberlake, it deals with the photometric plan that we didn't have and the Forest Preserve it didn't have prior to the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, and the only other thing I need to talk, I maybe I just didn't understand the landscaping plan. Um, th there was not a number of fir trees along the south and east uh, portion. Um, it just had circles, everything, all the other trees had numbers, these didn't. So I just need to clarify to make sure that there is a screening of fir trees on the south of Evergreen, I don't care what kind they are, but it said fir trees on the, along the south and the east corner. Thank you very much. And we're in support of the variance. Thank you. Thank you. Next, the look behind. Thank you. I represent the applicant in this project. 
just want to talk about, I know you denied a plan a year, year and a half ago, that plan brought, prior, prior plan sought sign variations, none are being requested here. It requested an 80 foot high dome. It was 90,000 square feet. This building is 17% smaller and less than half the size. Uh, the prior request had outdoor and indoor activities being lit adjacent to residential properties until 11 o'clock at night. Here, just an indoor facility over 800 feet away from any residents. Um, last plan sought a number of setback variations. This one does not. Last one had a lot more uses and, and requested 215 parking spaces were now staggering the, those, that, those uses. There's less uses, only indoor uses. And we're asking for 250 steps. Um, the ordinance, I think Paul will talk about, was is kind of outdated for this type of use. As for the Forest Preserve District letter, I have not seen it. I know it came in. Um, I know it has to do with the photometric plan as it relates to dark skies and compliance with the ordinance. We will do as one of our conditions was we will comply with the dark skies. We will comply with the county zoning ordinance, obviously, as our building ordinance as it relates to that. I actually have a new plan that was sent to me this morning at like eight o'clock. I, I don't understand it, so don't get me wrong, but I tell you we will comply and that's one of the conditions. Uh, other conditions that we worked very hard with Timberlakes and this painter about, uh, there's 14, 15 conditions, fencing, fir trees, Ms. Painter, uh, the question she asked, those are all fir trees on the south side uh, and we're doing, we've done everything we can. And I think Ms. Painter and the residents would say we've done a heck of a lot. It's a lot better plan. And we would ask for your support. Variation, I think Paul again will talk about, got a little weird at the ZBA. The ZBA voted for the conditional use and kind of split along the lines as far as it related to the variation, mostly because I don't think they completely understood it. I think Paul will talk about it, but uh, that's thank you for your time. Thank you. And last for Shram. There aren't there. Okay. Hi, my name is Rose Schramm. I live directly behind this proposed development. Um, I would ask that you recommend to deny it again. There is um, no buffer between this building and my house. They're going to plant six foot fir trees, eight foot below the grade of the building. Those aren't going to do any good for 20 years. My property stands about 12 feet above the swampland, wetlands, and then it goes back up. They're, they're at the same level I'm at. All the vegetation is down below. Well, there's no way they can buffer this from us. Part of the reason, again, is here you are trying to put an industrial sized building, an acre and three quarter building. That's huge in a residential area. So as far as property values go, how does that not make a property values go down? Um, and as far as the traffic study that was done, again, they did it in the middle of winter. I've got <laughs> pictures that show over 200 cars at uh, Waterfall Glen in the summertime. And there's, there's traffic that wasn't counted at all. The building that they built in Darien for the trucking company isn't in full swing yet. So there's traffic there that wasn't in the study. Um, and finally, this doesn't provide any benefit to our community. None of us can walk in there with our grandkids and play soccer. This is open for private use only. So this doesn't benefit our community at all. Thank you. Thank you. George Morgan. Yes, uh, first I'd like to start by saying, I agree 100% with Linda Painter and I won't repeat any of the uh, context of that. But I did want to thank the developing committee and Brian and all of the people that I've looked at for the last 40 years who are changing continually, but they've always done one consistent thing, keep our neighborhood safe. We wouldn't have a neighborhood if it weren't for the development committee and the zoning committee. So I want to be sure that I pass this thank you to all of you for all the work you put in over the years, you and your predecessors. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. John Curcio. My name is John Curcio. I've lived in Timber Lake for about 40 years. I live uh, off of Fern Street, which is the South Frontage Road. I um, uh, happen to disagree with uh, what Per had said. I think this would be good for our community. And I support everything that Linda has said and mentioned to you beforehand. I, uh, uh, I want to thank again everybody here. 
that has done what they should be doing for the community and also the uh, board itself. Thank you very much. Thank you, John. And last but not least, Joe Lenhart. I just want to support Linda 100% and thank all of you for everything. Thank you. Thank you. That appears to conclude the public comment portion of the meeting. Move on to approval of the minutes. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to read a letter that I did receive. We received from the Forest Preserve District of Page County, and they asked that it be read into the record. Addressed to me, dear Mr. Tornatore, the Forest Preserve District received a notice of public hearing, hearing date March 24, 2022, regarding West Suburban Athletic Development Corporation's petition for conditional use for recreational facility and a variation to reduce the required number of parking spaces as it relates to the above reference property. Prior to the hearing date, the Forest Preserve District only received a one page site plan and three building renderings of the proposed development. The Forest Preserve District subsequently provided a response letter stating our concerns and requested additional plans to review photometric plan and landscape plan. After the public hearing meeting, we received and reviewed the landscape plan and photometric plan. The Forest Preserve District is okay with the plant materials shown on the landscape plan. However, the photometric plan identifies excessively tall light poles, 50 feet height, and there is no glare control on the lights. This will contribute to excess light pollution to nearby residences and open space. Light pollution can have a detrimental effect to wildlife and adherence to dark sky compliance principles can help reduce these impacts. Also, the photometric plan only shows the amount of foot candles at the edge of the parking lot and lacks data at the property lines. It is our understanding that the county's code requirement is that exposed sources of light be controlled so that illumination at the property line shall not be in excess of one half foot candle in residential district. It's requested that the photometric plan be revised to meet the county's code requirement for the amount of foot candles at the property lines. Also, the photometric plan should be revised to show a detailed schedule of fixtures with cut sheets of proposed fixtures and shielding. The Forest Preserve District would like to review the revised photometric plan. Please consider this as the Forest Preserve District's request that this letter be read and entered into the public record at the Tuesday, April 19, 22 Development Committee meeting. If you have any questions, please contact me, sign Kevin Stowe. Was entered into the, the record, read into the record, now entered into the record, and that concludes the public comment portion of the meeting. Moving on to approval of the minutes, I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes of Tuesday, Seven. April 5th. Second. Any additions, corrections, or deletions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The minutes are approved. I'll entertain a motion to approve DC 022 22, ordinance zoning 22 000 006. York Township Highway Department Zoning Board of Appeals recommending to approve a variation to reduce the side yard setback from 20 feet to approximately 10 feet for a new accessory storage building. So moved. Second. Motion and second. Any questions, comments? Hearing none, seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Moving on to DC 023 22, ordinance zoning 22. 000013, the West Suburban Development Corporation. Before I entertain a motion to approve this, I just for uh, the edification of the committee, we're going to we'll do a motion in a second as this ordinance is written. It's somewhat different because it approves and disapproves something in a, com in a combined fashion. We can then discuss it if the sense of the committee is to approve this in its entirety. We can withdraw this motion and then do what we always do, which is entertain a motion in the affirmative for both so that we're not bifurcating and moving away from what the Zone Board of Appeals has done. I declared it with Paul and it seems to be all on board with that, if that's the sense of the committee. So I'll entertain a motion to approve the West Suburban Development Zoning Board of Appeals recommendation to approve a conditional use for an indoor soccer recreation facility and not make a favorable recommendation on the variation to reduce required number of parking spaces from 344 to 251, solely on the ground that the variation would run with the land 
and is looking for a development committee to reconcile that concern. So that's why we're here. Is there a motion? So moved. A motion second. and a second. Okay, now we can have a discussion. Um, all you can start, I guess. So um, I just want to clear up a couple of things that came through with it from the Zoning Board of Appeals relative to the variation. It, just to be clear, and as some of the representatives of the petitioner have indicated, the Zoning Board of Appeals had no objection with the reduction in the parking requirements. Uh, the petitioner had clearly demonstrated through traffic studies and testimony and evidence that the number of parking spaces that would be needed for the operations, even at their peak, is sufficient with the amount of parking that they're proposing. The Zoning Board of Appeals found that to be the case as well. The issue the Zoning Board of Appeals had, which we've heard of this committee before, is that technically variations legally run with the land. And so their concern was that if the variation was granted, then the number of parking spaces, in theory, in their opinion, would run with the land for any use that would be on this property in the future. Um, because this is also a conditional use, there are conditions in the conditional use that tie the zoning relief to the specific use of the soccer facility and the specific user. Um, so the variation in parking is mitigated by the fact that any user that uses this property in the future, even if it's for the exact same use, that petition or that new property owner would have to come back to the Zoning Board of Appeals, come through Development Committee, and come through County Board and prove up the same thing that the current <coughs> petitioner has done. So that really mitigates this whole notion of variations technically running the land. I just want to make that clear. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. You have to get another conditional. You got to come back in. Else. Right. You got to come back in. So the that whole parking issue is is uh, is completely mitigated. Once again, Sorry. the operations of this use for this user or any future user uh, have been shown to uh, to at the very least meet the be able to meet the parking requirements. There's there's plenty of parking on this property to accommodate that. In addition, you've seen some of the conditions that require that there be no parking on frontage road, so there will be there won't be any parking allowed in there that'll be paroled or patrolled by the sheriff's office uh, violation or issues or um, i'm sorry uh, tickets will be issued also there's a zoning provision that allows us to ticket vehicles on the public right of way that are parked in violation of this ordinance so all of those things mitigate the variation yes sorry thank you yeah i mean that answers the question i remember when this came up the first time and um, if the developer thought that they needed 300 parking spaces, and now they've cut that down to 251 parking spaces, my concern was that the neighbors would find all of these cars parked along their roadways. So you're saying that's not going to happen and inconvenience the neighbors. That's correct. And the part of, part of that rationale is that, as you heard from the attorney for the petitioner, or for the applicant, um, this the size and the scope of the operations has reduced a shrunk. There is no outside activities. In the previous uh, case, um, there was another piece of property to the south that is adjacent to this property that was going to be or that being proposed to be used for outside uh, athletic fields. Not only is that not going to occur in this development, but the southern portion of that property is not part of this development. And when you see in the conditions, you'll see that we've, we've um, uh, been very technical in the writing of the conditions. The zoning relief applies only to the legal description that is for the northern piece of the property, not the southern piece of the property that was part of the previous. So the total scale of operations has scaled down dramatically. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Chairman. Member Kuczewski. Thank you. I know, I know that there's been several traffic studies that have gone. The traffic seems to be fine and based on the studies and also the zoning board feeling that the variance is fine, but I know the you know, Marion, Willowbrook, and Burr Ridge had no objections, no comments. Tri State had no objections. Towners Township, no, no comment. But the highway commissioner said he objects and he's concerned with traffic exiting the facility. Recommend no. Did he give any reasons why? No. Um, Did he just blood out that no, I object. That's just because of the traffic, but it, no analysis, no. Did he see the traffic report? Yes. But he gave no reason. No. The only thing that, that in some conversations that we've had, the only concern that we see that may be out there was the concern that is being addressed in a traffic study by the county of uh, an area of Frontage Road and Cass Avenue further to the west. But that's a larger scale traffic study that the county's engaged in. But there is nothing in writing that indicates what is what the um, uh, 
with the predicate for I mean, the objection. The board preserve is the attached document. Again, I mean, you know, when people say we have no comment or we're okay with it, or these are our concerns, but I just got a flat out, I object, I have concerns with traffic accidents, until I don't. And I would just point out that um, while there is no uh, you know, predicate for the objection, there were other concerns that the petitioner has addressed. For instance, no right turn going eastbound. There'll be traffic, um, there'll be uh, movement, uh, signalization signs that would prohibit, uh, physical uh, uh, structures that would prohibit uh, patrons from going eastbound on front each road. Yeah, we could follow just some, I mean, it doesn't do us any good if uh, you object to something that you don't even know what the reasons are. So I don't really know what the concerns are to address because I don't get it. So we'll reach out. Okay. I guess more clarification. Yeah. Rosa. Paul, refresh my memory. There are op hours of operation ending at 11. Um, yeah. I believe that the condition does put in at, uh, I believe it's uh, 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. Um, and that except that's operations. There is security lighting that will be there and that will uh, shut off at uh, from midnight to 6 a.m. That will not be on. But the operations are 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. Okay. And is there any anticipation that weekends might be an issue? Is there, I, I don't, or is it, it's going to be just a random operation in terms of, what, it's not random, it's scheduled operations, Correct. whatever they're bringing in. Correct. So, so. Any other questions of Paul? Sorry. Paul, is that map um, directionally accurate, like north, south, east, west? North and south, correct. North and south. Okay, so I explained to me why it, it would seem to be, excuse me, it would seem to be safer to allow people to make um, an eastbound exit on the front of road rather than a, a westbound exit, right? But you're saying they're not allowed to make that eastbound exit? That's correct. Could you explain that? So one of the concerns is that when you go eastbound, well, first of all, the property um, is situated between um, two major roadways. And the closest roadway to this property is Cass Avenue to the west. Okay. When you travel to the east, um, you run into some open areas and single family residential neighborhoods. You've heard some of the neighbors um, here today talk about their neighborhoods. So one of the concerns is to prevent any traffic from going eastbound and then potentially maybe going into the neighborhoods to get out to Clarendon Hills Road to the east. Um, so that would prevent any traffic from this development going eastbound and potentially going into some of those residential neighborhoods. All the traffic will go westbound and westbound what you have is you have Forest Preserve, and then you have some industrial zone that develop the property in the village of Darien, and then you have Cass Avenue. So all of that non-residential traffic will be going past non-residential. Yeah, thank you so much. Vice Chair Garcia. Thank you, Chair Turner Horry. Uh, quick question, Paul. Um, I, I know there was some stormwater issues in this property, and I think I read that they're gonna be kind of taken care of with this project so some of the stormwater concerns should be uh, gone when this is completed is that correct that's correct the as we as i discussed earlier the the southern portion of the property um, that was part of the previous proposed development is no longer part of this development and that is where the the bulk of the stormwater issues occur they will have to be addressed but they'll be addressed as part of a separate opera, uh, action with the county but not part of this development there is some floodplain uh, through Sawmill Creek that goes to this property, and that will be um, uh, 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 taken care of, or not, I don't say taken care of, but that will be addressed as part of the countywide stormwater permit when they go through the permitting process. But the major bulk of the issues were all in the southern portion of the property, which is no longer part of this development. Okay, thank you, Paul. Uh, uh, in the same uh, topic, does the development corporation still own that southern part of the community, um, or is it? It's my understanding that it is under a separate entity. Um, it's not part of West Suburban. It's under a separate entity that might be owned by people who are also involved in the West Suburban Bank. But there, it's not the West Suburban Bank Corp. It's a different, a different entity that some of those 
um, uh, some of those people in West Suburban might have ownership in. But they're the completely disconnected. But it's not part of. Is it not one, part of this. But is it one discussion. parcel still? It is not. There is a. Okay, it's been separated. Was it, was it two parcels before in the previous plan? It, it was. It was one. Um, okay. But there's a provision in state law that allows um, someone to divide property without going through a formal plat planning process. It's called an assessment plat, and that was done. <laughs> It was done in order to make sure that the developer could come forward and say the subject property is the only property that is the subject of this petition. And then okay. the two are completely separated and have nothing to do with one another. And any further development would have for that southern area would have to be done separately under for that plat of survey. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Yes. Okay. And, and, and just to be clear, as you yeah. look through the conditions, you'll see that we have the legal descriptions and some of the conditions. And the reason we've done that is to make it crystal clear that everybody knows that the zoning relief is for this specific legal described property, uh, which yeah, was the graphic in this rectangle here. Okay, thank you. Any other before, before I get going, is, right. if, if I could just clear with the petitioner's attorney, is, is that a fair and accurate assessment of the ownership? It's been sold to a different entity or different ownership. <laughs> And the concerns that were raised in the letter from the Forest Preserve are presumably uh, resolved or will be resolved because obviously this petition has to conform to the county code. Right? So two things there is that the county has a photometric plan, which the petitioner has indicated they will comply with. Uh, so as part of the building permit process, we will be reviewing the photometric plan, not only for issuing of permits, but then we'll follow through once the, the development is up and going and we'll monitor the lights. The other thing that the petitioner has indicated, which is the first development that we've seen in the county that A, has the opportunity to do this, uh, and B, has been willing at the very least to accept it, is, the, is to accept the, um, the condition on number 10 uh, to comply with the DuPage County resolution uh, dealing with the dark skies resolution. There's no ordinance that the county has that requires that, but the petitioners agreed to, um, to comply with that resolution, which is uh, it's, it's way ahead of us even getting that ordinance in place in our ordinance. So they will have to comply with it as well as part of this ordinance. So the issues resolved. Bottom line. Essentially resolved. Yes. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. If there's a sense of the committee that this is going to be approved with the variation for the parking places, um, unless there is an objection, I'll entertain a motion to amend. DCO 23 22, zoning 22000013, to approve a conditional use for an indoor soccer recreational facility and to approve a variation to reduce the required number of parking spaces from 344 to 251. So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second. Any discussion on the amendment? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion is amended. Now we have a motion in front of us to approve the conditional use as indicated and the variation to reduce the number of parking places. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Motion second. I'll do a roll call. Member Rudlich? Aye. Member Ozaw? Aye. Member Krajewski? Aye. Member Garcia? Aye. Chair Tornatori? Aye. And the motion is approved. Any old business? Any new business? Very not saying that. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Motion to second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you all.